Recently, one of Washington DC's famous families left town. A 25-year-old female called Mei Xiang, a 26-year-old male called Tian Tian, and their son, three years old, Xiao Qi Ji. The three of them hopped onto loading crates and they took a 19-hour flight to Chengdu in China. These are the giant pandas from the National Zoo in Washington DC in the United States. These pandas had been cuddly mascots at the zoo and they've been a symbol of goodwill and peace between China and the United States. What's happened now and why have the pandas left the United States and gone back home? Hi, you're listening to What's New Today, a kids and family podcast about current events shaping our world. This is your host Sangeeta from India and in today's episode we'll explore a story called Panda Diplomacy. Let's jump into a time machine and go back about 1300 years. China used to be ruled by the Tang Dynasty. And the empress of China at that time was a lady called Wu Zetan. And uh, the empress wanted to stop all her fighting with a neighboring country, Japan. And she decided that she would reach out to the Japanese emperor and tell him, let's stop fighting and let's start improving trade between the two countries. So people have enough food to eat and everybody is happy and wealthy and rich. So if I had been the empress of China, I might have taken a parchment and um, dipped my quill in ink and would have written a lovely letter telling the Japanese emperor that hey let's be great friends and I'm sending some merchants and why don't we get started with trading between the two countries. But Wu Zetan was far cleverer. Not only did she send a letter, she also sent two cute and cuddly panda bears to the Japanese emperor as a gift. If you've seen the movie Kung Fu Panda, I think you know what I'm talking about. But in the event you've never seen a panda bear, panda bears have large heads, they have large eyes, they don't have a neck, they have a pear-shaped body, fat legs, a bulging tummy and short arms. And they are black and white. They usually live in mountains and they love to eat bamboo. This gesture by the Empress of China reminds me of how friends like to share their toys with each other if they like their friend. China too has long continued this tradition of sending pandas to kingdoms and countries that China is friendly with. Let's jump back into the time machine and roll forward a few hundred years. So let's get to somewhere around the end of the Second War, late 1940s, early 1950s, China and the United States were enemies around this time. The United States said, we are great and we are a democratic country, which means we elect our leaders by voting for them fair and square. Look at China, they do none of this. And the US felt threatened because they felt that China would keep expanding and it would enter and occupy countries near it. So the United States decided that they would not be friends with China. China, on the other hand, has always had a glorious past. They've been a rich and a strong country for many, many centuries. And China felt threatened because the United States was invading China's neighbours, countries like Vietnam. And they did not feel comfortable at all with the United States. So clearly, China also did not want to be friends with the US. And then, sometime in the early 1970s, things began to change. Both of them felt enough was enough. Let's become friends. Because you know what, if we stop fighting and we start trading with each other, we could both benefit from that. So the leaders of the two countries met, they hugged each other, they shook hands, they smiled. And then China turned around and said, Gee, now that we're friends, why don't we gift you a few panda bears? And that's how the United States got a pair of panda bears sometime around 1972. When the United Kingdom, which is Britain, 
saw that the US was getting cute and cuddly panda bears, the UK Prime Minister turned around and looked at China and said, Hey, look, even I want to be friends with you. Can you send us a panda bear too? And China turned around and said, Yes, we'd love to do that. And so China did send the London Zoo a panda bear in 1974. And right after that, the two countries started uh, signing many deals. They would start selling cars in each other's countries. They would start developing technology with each other. So once the panda went into the United Kingdom and many other countries in Europe, so China started dealing with those countries on a far friendlier footing. Even one of China's neighboring countries, a country called Malaysia, they had a bit of a fight with China for a few years, sometime around 2010 or so. And how do we know that the fight got over? Because in 2014, China sent some panda bears to Malaysia also, signaling an olive branch. The world over, if you see, Panda bears have been winning people with their cute antics. You can see long lines of crowds in any zoo that has panda bears, whether it's the United States or Europe or anywhere else in the world. Now, sometime around the 1980s, China decided to change its policy a little bit. It said we will no longer be gifting our pandas to any country. We will be lending our pandas. And China would lend pandas only for a period of 10 years. And for every year that another country keeps the panda bear in their zoo, they have to pay China a fee of $1 million every year. And at the end of the 10th year, China would decide if it wanted to let those countries continue keeping those pandas or if it wanted those pandas to come back. But now we come to December 2023. China did not want to let its pandas that were there in Washington, D.C. to continue staying there. It said, your tenure period is over. Please send the pandas back home. When China did this, many leaders around the world were looking at the two countries anxiously. I'm talking about the United States and China. They felt that if China was stopping to lend its pandas to someone, it must mean a war was around or at least a cold silent war, if not an open war. But just last week in January of 2024, a Chinese foreign minister issued this statement, which I'm going to read aloud. Preparations are on for a giant panda to return to the zoos of the United States, especially the zoo in California. The tension across Earth seems to have been broken, at least for now, all thanks to giant panda bears. So, hello listeners. Shall we see if you've been listening to this story carefully? Here's a quick quiz for you. Three questions based on what I've narrated in this story so far. Shall we give it a shot? All right, here's your question one. More than 1,300 years ago, to which country did the empress of China send panda bears as gifts? The answer is Japan. Question two. Pandas are often pure white in color. Sometimes they can even be blue and brown. Very rarely are they black and white. Is this true or false? The answer is false. Pandas are mostly black and white. There have been exceptions. There are known to be a few pandas purely white uh, with a few red spots, I think, for eyes. But this was most likely due to a skin condition called albino and that caused this aberration. But otherwise, they are mostly black and white. Third and last question, pandas are no longer gifted by China but lent to other countries. What does China get in return? The correct answer is it gets a fee of a million dollars every year and also of course good friendly relations with those countries.
Now, I have got a different question for you that I'd love to hear your answer. Can you think of any animal apart from the panda bear that can serve as a gesture of goodwill between countries? If not an animal, it can even be a bird or a sea creature. Which creature would you vote for to be a mascot of goodwill between countries? If you're listening to this on Spotify, please scroll down. You'll find this question and just hit the reply button there and send me your answer. Or you can just send me your answer via email to hello at wsnt.in. And I've got a request for our listeners. If you've enjoyed listening to episodes on what's new today so far and would like to support us, please do buy us a cup of coffee. You can just do this by scrolling down and clicking on support us. And team what's new today will be thrilled this week and thank you heartily for recognizing the effort and love that we pour into each one of our episodes. That's it from us. New episodes on What's New Today come out every Monday and Friday. Thanks for listening.